Ever wondered how to create an authentic Chinese chicken curry right in your own kitchen? Well, you're about to discover the secrets to this savory dish and learn how to prepare it from scratch. To start, gather all the ingredients. You'll need boneless chicken thigh pieces, one large onion, two cloves of garlic, fresh ginger, a handful of green peas, and two carrots. For the curry sauce, you'll need a blend of spices, turmeric, cumin, coriander, and chili powder. And don't forget the star of the show, curry powder. You'll also need some vegetable oil, chicken broth, and coconut milk. Now, on to the preparation. First, chop your onion, garlic, and ginger. Next, dice the carrots and slice the chicken into bite-sized pieces. Remember to keep everything organized. It makes the cooking process smoother. Then, heat a generous amount of vegetable oil in a wok or large frying pan. Add the chopped onion, garlic, and ginger. Stir-fry these until they become fragrant, releasing their distinct aromas into the air. This step is crucial as it forms the base flavor for your curry. Next, add the chicken pieces to the pan. Cook them until they turn a beautiful golden brown color. Browning the chicken not only gives it a nice texture but also adds a depth of flavor to the curry. Once the chicken is well cooked, it's time to introduce the spices. Add the turmeric, cumin, coriander, chili powder, and curry powder. Stir well to make sure every piece of chicken is well coated with the spices. Now pour in the chicken broth followed by the coconut milk. Stir everything together and bring it to a simmer. The broth and coconut milk create a rich, creamy sauce that's packed with flavor. At this point, add your chopped carrots and green peas. Stir them in and let the curry simmer until the vegetables are tender. This could take around 15 to 20 minutes. And there you have it, a delightful Chinese chicken curry cooked to perfection right in your kitchen. It's a blend of tender chicken pieces, crunchy vegetables, and a creamy, spicy curry sauce. In summary, the process begins with preparing the ingredients, then stir-frying the onion, garlic, and ginger. The chicken is added and browned before being coated with a mix of spices. The dish is then simmered with chicken broth and coconut milk. And finally, the vegetables are added. With patience and practice, anyone can master this delicious Chinese chicken curry, so why not give it a try? The tantalizing flavors of this Chinese chicken curry are sure to impress your taste buds. Enjoy the process, savor the aroma, and most importantly, relish every bite of your homemade Chinese chicken curry. Ever wondered how chicken tikka masala, a beloved Indian dish, is prepared? The captivating aroma of spices, the vibrant colors, and the rich, creamy texture all come together to create this culinary masterpiece. Today, we are embarking on a journey to explore the secrets behind this tantalizing dish. First, let's unravel the mystery of the chicken. Traditionally, boneless chunks of chicken are marinated in a mixture of yogurt and spices. The spices typically include turmeric, coriander, cumin, and garam masala, each lending its unique flavor to the chicken. The yogurt not only adds a tangy note but also tenderizes the chicken, making it succulent and juicy. The marinated chicken is then cooked in a tandoor, a traditional Indian clay oven. The intense heat of the tandoor sears the chicken, locking in the flavors and giving it a smoky char. However, fear not if you don't have a tandoor at your disposal. A grill or a hot oven can be a worthy substitute. Now onto the masala, the heart and soul of the dish. The masala is a sauce, a symphony of tomatoes, onions, garlic, ginger, and a medley of spices. The onions and tomatoes are sautéed until they are soft and caramelized. Then the garlic, ginger, and spices are added, their flavors melding together to create a sauce that is aromatic, spicy, and slightly sweet. The cooked chicken is then added to the sauce, simmering gently until it absorbs the flavors of the masala. A dash of cream is stirred in at the end, giving the dish its characteristic richness and velvety texture. Chicken tikka masala is not just a dish, it's a culinary journey that takes you through the heart of India, a country known for its diverse food culture. It's a dish that tells a story of centuries-old traditions, of spices traded on ancient roots, of the warmth and hospitality of Indian homes. It's a dish that transcends borders, adored and savored by people all over the world. How to eat chicken tikka masala the Indian way, you wonder? Well, it's traditionally served with basmati rice or naan, a type of Indian bread. The fluffy rice or the warm, soft naan perfectly complements the creamy, spicy chicken tikka masala, creating a meal that is comforting and delicious. So there you have it, 
the secrets behind the delectable chicken tikka masala, a dish that is as rich in flavors as it is in history, a dish that brings the essence of India to your plate. Next time you savor a plate of chicken tikka masala, remember the journey it has taken from the bustling streets of India to your dinner table. Enjoy every bite, knowing you are partaking in a centuries-old culinary tradition. Imagine a plate of the most delicate and delightful Chinese dim sum, an array of bite-sized morsels that are as pleasing to the eye as they are to the palate. Each piece is a tiny, tantalizing treasure of culinary artistry encased in a thin, translucent wrapper that reveals a vibrant, flavorful filling within. The dish is accompanied by a rich, tangy sauce that adds an extra layer of complexity to the flavor profile. To create this masterpiece, begin with the filling. Combine finely chopped shrimp, pork, shiitak mushrooms, scallions and bamboo shoots in a bowl. Add a splash of soy sauce, a dash of sesame oil, a pinch of white pepper and a sprinkle of sugar for seasoning. Mix these ingredients thoroughly until they blend into a harmonious melody of flavors. Next, turn your attention to the wrappers. These thin, round sheets of dough are the vessels that will carry your filling. They should be soft, pliable and thin enough to allow the colors of the filling to shine through, yet sturdy enough to hold everything together. Once the filling and wrappers are ready, it's time to assemble the dim sum. Place a spoonful of filling in the center of each wrapper. Fold the wrapper over the filling, pleating the edges as you go to create a beautiful fan-like shape. Repeat this process until all the wrappers and filling have been used. Now comes the cooking. Place a bamboo steamer over a pot of boiling water, arrange the dim sum on the steamer's tiers, cover, and let them steam for about 15 minutes. The result will be soft, tender dim sum with a deliciously juicy filling. While the dim sum are cooking, prepare the dipping sauce. Combine soy sauce, sesame oil, rice vinegar, and a touch of honey in a bowl. Stir until everything is well mixed. This sauce will provide a tangy contrast to the rich flavors of the dim sum. Once the dim sum are cooked, carefully arrange them on a plate. Garnish with fresh cilantro leaves and serve hot, accompanied by the dipping sauce. To complete the meal, consider pairing the dim sum with a refreshing side dish like a cucumber salad or a light dessert like mango pudding. These will provide a refreshing contrast to the rich, savory flavors of the dim sum. In summary, making dim sum involves preparing a flavorful filling, wrapping it in thin dough wrappers and steaming the resulting parcels until they are tender and juicy. The dish is served with a tangy dipping sauce and can be paired with a variety of side dishes and desserts to create a complete, satisfying meal. Mastering the art of dim sum making may take some time and practice, but the results are well worth the effort. So roll up your sleeves and dive into the wonderful world of Chinese cuisine. Happy cooking! Ever wondered how to make sushi at home just like a Japanese chef? Today we're going to demystify this culinary art form, breaking it down into simple, easy to follow steps that will turn you into a sushi maestro in no time. Step one, gather your ingredients. The beauty of sushi lies in its simplicity, so quality is key. You'll need sushi grade fish, sushi rice, nori sheets, wasabi, pickled ginger, soy sauce, and a bamboo sushi mat. Step two, prepare your sushi rice. Rinse the rice under cold water until the water runs clear. Then, cook it in a rice cooker or on the stove. Once cooked, season it with a mixture of rice vinegar, sugar and salt, stirring it gently to avoid crushing the grains. Step 3. Prep your fish. If you're using raw fish, make sure it's sushi grade. Slice it into thin, long pieces. If raw fish isn't your thing, feel free to use cooked shrimp, crab or even veggies. Step 4. Roll your sushi. Place a sheet of nori on your bamboo mat. Then spread a thin layer of sushi rice on top, leaving about an inch of nori at the top. Place your fish or veggies in the center of the rice. Now, using the bamboo mat, roll the sushi tightly, applying pressure to keep it firm. Step 5. Slice your sushi. Use a sharp knife to slice the roll into bite-sized pieces. Remember to wet your knife between each cut to prevent the rice from sticking. Step 6. Serve your sushi. Arrange your sushi pieces on a plate and serve with wasabi, pickled ginger and a small dish of soy sauce. Now let's talk about the extras. Sushi is often enjoyed with a glass of sake or green tea depending on the time of day. If you're making sushi for dinner, a warm sake can be a delightful companion. 
If it's lunchtime, a refreshing cup of green tea is the way to go. And don't forget about dessert. Traditional Japanese desserts, like mochi or matcha ice cream, can be a perfect way to round off your sushi feast. To recap, making sushi at home is all about sourcing high-quality ingredients, preparing them with care, and presenting them with finesse. With a little practice, you'll be rolling sushi like a pro, impressing your friends and family with your culinary skills. Remember, sushi is not just food, it's an art form. It's a celebration of simplicity and balance. And now you're part of that tradition. So, go ahead, roll up your sleeves and make some sushi magic happen in your own kitchen. Ever wondered why your homemade kimchi doesn't quite taste like the one from your favorite Korean restaurant? Or perhaps you've asked yourself, what on earth is fermentation, and why is it so important in food preparation? Today, we're diving into the world of fermentation and the art of making kimchi. Kimchi, a staple in Korean cuisine, is a fermented dish made of vegetables with a variety of seasonings. The process of making it is both an art and a science, and today we'll explore it step by step. First, gather all the necessary ingredients. These include a head of Napa cabbage, daikon radish, carrot, green onions, garlic, ginger, Korean red pepper flakes, fish sauce, salted shrimp and sugar. Begin by chopping the Napa cabbage into bite-sized pieces and soaking them in a brine of salt and water for about two hours. This step allows the cabbage to soften and begin the fermentation process. While the cabbage soaks, prepare the kimchi paste. Grate the daikon radish and carrot, chop the green onions, mince the garlic and ginger, and mix them with the Korean red pepper flakes, fish sauce, salted shrimp, and sugar. This spicy paste is the heart of kimchi's distinct flavor. After two hours, rinse the cabbage under cold water three times to ensure all the salt is washed away. Then, mix the cabbage with the prepared kimchi paste. Make sure every piece of cabbage is well coated with the paste. Now comes the fermentation part. Pack the kimchi into a clean jar, pressing down on it until the brine rises to cover the vegetables. Leave about an inch of space at the top, seal the jar. Finally, let the jar sit at room temperature for one to two days. After this, the kimchi is ready to eat, but remember, the longer it ferments in the refrigerator, the deeper its flavors will develop. Fermentation not only gives kimchi its unique taste, but also enhances its nutritional values. It increases the availability of vitamins and minerals in food and creates beneficial enzymes, B vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids, and probiotics. Regular consumption of fermented foods like kimchi can improve digestion, boost immunity, and even help maintain a healthy weight. So, the next time you enjoy a plate of kimchi, remember the art and science that went into making it. And if you're feeling adventurous, why not try making it yourself? Before we wrap up, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more culinary adventures and food wisdom. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the wonderful world of fermentation. Ever wondered how to cook authentic Japanese ramen at home? Well, wonder no more. Today we unravel the secret to creating this delectable dish right in your own kitchen. Firstly, understand that ramen is not just a dish, it's an art. A symphony of flavors beautifully woven together to create a culinary masterpiece. Start with the broth. The soul of any ramen is its broth. The secret? Time and patience. You need a good six to eight hours to let the flavors truly infuse. Use pork bones, chicken carcasses, or a mix of both depending on your preference. Combine these with water, onions, garlic, and ginger. Let it simmer on a low flame. The result? A rich, flavorful broth that forms the heart of your ramen. Now let's move to the next crucial element, the tear. This is the salty, umami-packed seasoning that gives ramen its distinct taste. You can make this using soy sauce, sake, and mirin. Cook these ingredients on a low heat until they reduce to a thick, flavorful sauce. Next, let's tackle the noodles. Authentic ramen noodles have a distinct chewy texture that's hard to replicate. But with a little bit of practice, you can master it. You need wheat flour, water, salt, and a special ingredient called kansui, a type of alkaline water. Mix these together, knead well, and let the dough rest. After it's well rested, roll it out and cut into thin, long strips. The final components of your ramen are the toppings. These can vary greatly, but common ones include slices of roasted pork, boiled eggs with a soft yolk, green onions, and sheets of nori seaweed. Now comes the moment of truth. Assembling your ramen. 
Start with a generous helping of tear at the bottom of the bowl. Add the hot broth, then come the noodles, followed by your chosen toppings. And there you have it. A bowl of authentic Japanese ramen, cooked right in your own kitchen. This process may seem long and intricate, but remember, good things come to those who wait. Each step adds a layer of flavor, a depth of character to your ramen, making it a dish that's truly worth the effort. Before we wrap up, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more such culinary adventures. Cooking ramen is not just about feeding yourself, it's about understanding and appreciating a culture, a tradition that has been perfected over centuries. So the next time you sit down with your bowl of homemade ramen, remember you're not just eating a meal, you're partaking in a piece of Japanese heritage. Until next time, happy cooking! A royal feast. Introducing Kaiseki Ryori, Kaiseki Ryori. It's not just a meal, it's an experience. A symphony of flavors, textures, colors, all meticulously arranged. Imagine the freshest fish plucked from the sea just hours ago. Picture delicate vegetables grown with care and precision. This is Kaiseki, the pinnacle of Japanese cuisine. Born in the imperial courts, this cuisine is about more than just food. It's about art, it's about seasonality, it's about respect for ingredients and tradition. Kaiseki is a dance between chef and diner, each dish a carefully choreographed step in a culinary performance. Don't expect huge portions or gut-busting flavors. This is about subtlety, about nuance. It's about appreciating the delicate balance of taste and texture. Every bite is a journey, every sip a revelation. This is food that engages all your senses. From humble origins to imperial tables, the history of Kaiseki. Kaiseki's roots are surprisingly humble. It started centuries ago with simple meals served at tea ceremonies. Think rice, miso soup, maybe some pickled vegetables. But over time, things got more elaborate. As the samurai rose to power, so did the complexity of Kaiseki. It became a way to impress, a display of wealth and refinement. By the Edo period, Kaiseki had reached its peak. It was the food of the elite served in grand castles and palaces. Rules were codified, traditions established. The order of dishes, the presentation, the ingredients themselves, all carefully dictated. This wasn't just dinner, this was a ritual. Nature's Bounty, the ingredients of Kaiseki. Forget your supermarket produce. Kaiseki is all about seasonality. Chefs spend months planning their menus, sourcing the absolute best ingredients at their peak. Spring, expect tender bamboo shoots and delicate cherry blossom accents. Autumn brings earthy mushrooms and vibrant maple leaves. The ingredients don't just flavor the dish, they tell a story. Seafood is king in Kaiseki. But we're not talking fish sticks and tartar sauce. Think glistening slices of sashimi, so fresh you can practically taste the ocean. Delicate pieces of uni, creamy and briny. Perhaps a perfectly grilled piece of fish seasoned with just a touch of salt. It's about showcasing the natural flavors. Section four, the art of precision, preparing kaiseki raiori. Cooking kaiseki isn't for the faint of heart. It's a meticulous process, requiring years of training and a deep understanding of flavor. Chefs are like artists, wielding their knives with precision and grace. Every slice, every dice, every garnish has its place. Presentation is paramount. Dishes are arranged like miniature landscapes with careful attention to color, texture and shape. Timing is everything. Each dish must be prepared and served at its peak. The soup should be steaming, the sashimi ice cold, the rice perfectly cooked and seasoned. It's a symphony of flavors and textures, all coming together in perfect harmony. Section 5, a culinary pilgrimage, the global appeal of Kaiseki. Kaiseki was once a secret, hidden away in exclusive restaurants and private homes, but the world has taken notice. Chefs around the globe are incorporating Kaiseki principles into their own cooking. The focus on seasonality, the meticulous plating, the respect for ingredients, it's an approach that transcends borders. But to truly experience Kaiseki, you have to go to the source. Japan is home to some of the world's best kaiseki restaurants. From Michelin-starred temples of gastronomy to humble family-run establishments. It's an investment to be sure. 
But for those seeking a culinary adventure, a journey into the heart of Japanese cuisine, Kaiseki is an experience that will stay with you long after the last bite. Donbury. The word itself conjures images of steaming bowls piled high with rice and savory toppings. This Japanese culinary icon has a rich history dating back centuries. Early versions were simple affairs. Think seafood and rice, a practical meal for fishermen. Over time, Donbury evolved. It moved from the docks to the streets of Edo, now Tokyo. Street vendors began to experiment. They added different ingredients and sauces, creating new and exciting variations. One of the earliest and most iconic examples is the tendon. This tempura-topped Donbury emerged in the 19th century. Its popularity helped solidify Donbury's place as a Japanese culinary staple. Today, countless variations exist, each telling a story of culinary innovation and cultural adaptation. Donbury holds a special place in the hearts and stomachs of the Japanese people. It's more than just a meal, it's comfort food, a symbol of home, and a reminder of family meals shared. Its popularity stems from its simplicity, affordability, and sheer deliciousness. Donberry is quick and easy to prepare. This makes it perfect for busy weeknights or a satisfying lunch. Its affordability made it accessible to people from all walks of life. Students, workers and families all enjoy this versatile dish, but it's the taste that truly captivates. The combination of fluffy rice, savory toppings and flavorful sauce is a harmonious blend of textures and tastes. Each bite is an explosion of umami, leaving you wanting more. The beauty of Donbury lies in its simplicity and endless possibilities. At its core, it's a dish of harmonious contrasts. Fluffy white rice provides a neutral base. This blank canvas allows the toppings to shine. The toppings are where the real magic happens. Thinly sliced beef simmers in a sweet and savory sauce for gyudon. Crispy tempura shrimp and vegetables bring a delightful crunch to tendon. Fresh seafood glistens atop a bed of seasoned rice for kaizenden. The sauce is the final touch, tying all the flavors together. Whether it's a sweet and savory teriyaki glaze or a light and tangy ponzu dressing, the sauce adds depth and complexity to every bite. Creating the perfect donberry is an art form. It requires attention to detail, respect for ingredients, and a dash of culinary creativity. The cooking process is relatively straightforward, but mastering the nuances is key to achieving Donbury perfection. It starts with the rice. Japanese short grain rice is preferred for its sticky texture. It's cooked to perfection in a rice cooker or on the stovetop. The rice should be fluffy, yet slightly sticky, holding its shape when topped with ingredients. The toppings are then cooked separately. Each ingredient is treated with care. This ensures optimal flavor and texture. Thinly sliced meats are quickly seared or simmered in flavorful sauces. Vegetables are blanched or stir-fried to retain their vibrant colors and crispness. Finally, the assembly. A generous portion of rice forms the base. Toppings are artfully arranged on top. A final drizzle of sauce completes the masterpiece. Eating Donbury is a multi-sensory experience. It's a feast for the eyes, nose, and taste buds. The visual appeal is undeniable. Steaming rice topped with colorful ingredients is a work of art. The aromas are equally enticing. The savory scent of simmering meat, the sweet fragrance of teriyaki sauce, the subtle aroma of freshly cooked rice, all mingle together, creating an irresistible invitation to indulge. But it's the taste that truly steals the show. The first bite is a symphony of textures and flavors. The soft, fluffy rice, the tender meat, the crisp vegetables and the flavorful sauce all come together in perfect harmony.